Welcome back. And there's an old saying that uh, for those who don't understand history, they are doomed to repeat it. Well, if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan, you understand this point well uh, time and time again. Boys, it's another year of a winless season or uh, playlist, uh, playoff list season. Nine years now, the longest streak in the National Hockey League. Guys, uh, do you see some optimism as much as GM Craig McTavish has said, referring to the rebuild? We're rebuilding again, but no, no, no. We're getting better. What do you say? Aaron, we'll start off with you. Well, you know, for me, I kind of like the, uh, the commitment they've gone to their core players of Taylor Hall, you know, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Jordan Everly, and Neil Yakupov. Now, however, I'm not really sold on Justin Schultz. I think that's, that's something that they need to solve, that he's not really where he needs to be right now. That said, I do like what they've kind of got going on with Oscar Kleffbaum. He's, you know, been brought up in the ranks, been in the organization for a couple of years, and we're finally starting to see some benefits with him. And I think, you know, if they start to follow that, you know, that philosophy more often, and hey, maybe even get third overall Noah Hannafin, if that's an, you know, an option. You got Darnell Nurse. That brings some optimism to the table, of course, but I mean, that said, there, there isn't much, and it kind of feels like they're just doing the same thing over and over, and not even Mac T knows what he's doing. Like this next coming year, if they don't change, they got to blow it up. They got to do something. You can't just keep hoping that things are eventually going to turn over and that, oh, if we win the draft lottery, we can get a McDavid or an Eichel, that that's going to change our team's fortune because it's not. It hasn't changed. It's the same players over and over. And you can call players like Taylor Hall and Nugent Hopkins great players, and they are, but maybe just not on that team. Maybe they need to move off. Maybe the Oilers need to move on from them and move on from that culture that they have and try something different because it clearly is not working. How about this? I've been pondering this in my head, and, and maybe you guys could tell me. I'll throw it out for you. You say if Buffalo does win the first, gets the first pick. Okay. You say we want McDavid. If the Oilers decided to give up their first round pick, which you know will be in the top three or four, uh, included a Taylor Hall or Jordan Eberle, and maybe another pick later down in the same draft, would you make that deal in order to get a McDavid? Do you yeah. think it'd be best to if get rid of? one of those core players because really and you mentioned it you've gone through f four years with this kid five years almost and the best that you've done is maybe finish 10th in the western conference yeah i think if you can get give up your first pick which is gonna be a third then and then give up taylor hall probably have to add something else in there to get connor mcdavid do it. Would that be smart? Would you think maybe that would be the best way to go? Or? I'm, I'm not a fan of that move just because I think that with Nuge in the lineup, if you add Connor McDavid, one of them has to play second line center, and I don't think one of them is a second line center. So, you know, I mean, it, no, it just, no, it doesn't, it doesn't work for me, no. Okay, well, how about this? Jordan Spieth, the next superstar of golf. Does that work for you, Aaron? This guy was phenomenal, um, either breaking records or tying records, set the course record for 18 under, which Tiger Woods set was just a couple months, I believe, younger than Tiger when he won his first event, uh, or first Masters, that is. Uh, then you also look at uh, the course records, the 36, after 36 holes, after 54 holes. Um, this guy seems like a stud. And on top of that, Under Armour, who is he sponsored with, ripped up the contract and gave him a brand new 10-year contract worth uh, umpteen some uh, dollars, uh, millions, of course. Guys, do you feel that we're starting to see a superstar in the rise with Jordan Spieth? I think that he set this weekend, he set the golf world on fire. And if we remember another, like you said, I think I remember another 21-year-old golfer who back in the day set the world on fire at the Masters. Oh, yeah, his name was Tiger Woods. So I really think that if you start to, I mean, you get down to it, golf's kind of hit a point now where, Tiger and Phil was always kind of, you know, the, the PGA rivalry. That's, but that's, that's not the time anymore. That's not the case. Now you got your Rory McIlroy's, your, your Ricky Fowler, maybe even some Adam Scott. And I think that if, if he can get involved in that discussion in that realm, it adds another face in there. And why not? That creates a whole other rivalry with a couple more guys in it. Andrew? I won't go superstar, but I'll think it's great for golf because it adds parity, yeah. which they haven't had. And it adds to that list of great yeah. players that you said now you've – you're growing a, a name base of players. It's not just the Tiger Woods show and then the rest of the field. Because I remember back in the day when you're betting on golf and that, it was who's going to win, Tiger Woods or the rest of the field. Now I'll take the rest of the field every single day, and now you have to open up that whole rest of the field. So I think it's great for golf, This guys doing this. Is it, though? For example, you're not when you look at golf, if you're a business like the PGA is, they're not looking to grab the golf fan. They know you'll be there, rain, sleet, snow, doesn't matter what you do. They yeah. know they're going to be there. 
uh, no matter who's the golfer. But yet, they want to go after the casual fan. Can Jordan Spieth be that guy where he, people gravitate much like people gravitated to Tiger Woods? I watch Tiger because I want to see what he's going to do next. I don't really, I'm not really concerned about Ricky Fowler in a in sense because he hasn't brought that appeal, that sex appeal to the sport of golf like Tiger has, like Rory's starting to. I see Jordan Spieth maybe becoming that next guy and that rivalry. You got McElroy, yeah. Spieth. That could Why be the not? next big thing. Maybe that's what they need more is a rivalry now. Not just a single player to be that poster child, but a rivalry of golfers. Because I don't think you can grow a sport on one player. I know we did for Tiger, but we talk about generational players. He's a generational yeah. golfer. We're not going to get in there. Tiger Woods and it's, you know, in so many years. Is, is Jordan that kind of player? Well, time will tell. I always like to say that. But How about this? We'll get to these questions really quick. Uh, Russell Wilson, we know he's a great quarterback. Two Super Bowls in the last three years. Super Bowl champion. Can we see him maybe be a professional baseball player and maybe hoist a, a World Series title? This guy's a two-sport athlete. He's great. And I know there's a lot of athletes out there, but can we actually see, for the first time in 20-some years, a two-sport professional athlete? Russell Wilson, Texas Rangers. Hey, I like it. Hey, I think we could see it, yeah, possibly. But if I'm the Seattle Seahawks, I'm not giving Russell Wilson that max contract that he wants if he's going to be spending his extra time over there with the Rangers. I mean, you always run the risk of injury doing anything. Look at Marcus Stroman. Was it bunting practice towards if that happened? That's to because Russ people have also got hurt because of sprinklers. Yeah. Trust me, that's just the Blue Jays. <laughs> We're talking about Russell Wilson here. Come on, man. I think it'd be, I, I'm, I'm nostalgic. I miss those days when I remember watching Bo Jackson. I remember watching Deion Sanders do the same thing, play two sports. I think that, I mean, if you look at football is obviously Russell Wilson's number one priority. That's the one he picked. And if he wants to be in the discussion of, you know, greatest of all time or in Super Bowls of all time, you don't see Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Joe Montana throwing a baseball around. You see them round the clock working towards that end goal, which is a Super Bowl. And I think if you distract them in that, you're not going to get there. And we know how much sports has changed since the Bo Jackson era and how it's about fitness now. And there, it's everything's so like the money involved, the I money, a lot like grosser. everything that's so much involved now compared to what was 20, 30 years ago. So I don't think anyone is going to want to like, especially the Seahawks are not going to see their starting quarterback going down to play baseball and potentially getting hurt and now you have to start drafting because it's going to mess up every franchise not just mm -hmm. one so uh, i think stick to one it's not anymore you have to spend so much time focused especially the quarterback position too where you have to know everything that's going on you don't have time to you hit and hit balls how, how about this We're going to switch our attention to basketball now San Antonio Spurs vaulted themselves to second place in the Western Conference. Winners of 11 in a row. Are they getting hot at the right time and perhaps the front runner to win an NBA title? Always. Never doubt the Spurs. Every year we look again, we say, here come the San Antonio Spurs. Greg Popovich gets in trouble for, you know, during the season. He kind of sits some guys on nationally televised games. But hey, when you're at the end of the season, you win 11 straight, bang, bang, bang at the end. You can't. You can't argue that logic right there. And every year, Spurs come again. Tim Duncan, what is he, 38, 39? Still doing it. And Kawhi Leonard is hot at the perfect time. Golden State Warriors, look out. But I'm looking at Golden State, 8 and 2 in the last 10. So they're not playing bad basketball at the end of the Best season. Best team in the league. Best team in the home league. Might, or home court throughout so, the playoffs. Yeah, so I'm going to say they're the team to beat. Like, we always like to look at the repeat champion, the defending champions, the team to beat, which I'm not going to take away from the Spurs. But you've got to beat the best. Like, Rick Flair said, "You got to beat the man. Be the man. I think you got to beat the. Let's go to Golden State." I have to say this: You look at the guys that always say how old they are and make jokes of them. I think the San Antonio Spurs team has Alzheimer's because they forget how to lose. <laughs> as terrible as that was, we're going to segue <laughs> to our next show. It'll be a lot better for you the next time out. We're going to be back with over under next.